Hi guys, it's your girl and I'm back with another one for you today. And today I'm checking out, watch this UK laser destroy drones instantly. The link for this will be in the description below. Please go over and show the content creator some love. All right, guys, with that said, let's see what this is all about. Here we go right about now. Did I say welcome, welcome one and all? Mwah, mwah, mwah. Here we go. Happy Black Friday, everybody. The UK just released footage of its Dragonfire laser vaporizing high-speed drones at 400 miles per hour. Dang. That is faster than most Russian aircraft move on purpose. And this is the first time any European nation has shown a fully operational high power laser actually killing real targets. Oh. If you thought my last video on Dragonfire in 2024 was wild, buckle up, because this story just leveled up. Hey friends, Wes O'Donnell here, military veteran, law grad, and I love talking about lasers. Pew pew. <laughs> a few months back, I broke down Dragonfire, the UK's sci-fi looking laser system that they were testing in Ukraine. At the time, Dragonfire was mostly trial shots, controlled tests, and a promise to maybe deploy in the late 2020s. Well, London just hit the turbo button. Yes, we're talking about the UK again. The Br I wonder if the US is shitting him in them boats to know that this is going on or like, uh-oh. Can we compete or can we not? British MOD has confirmed that Dragonfire is not only shooting down drones at attack speed, but the oh. system is being fast-tracked onto Royal Navy destroyers years ahead of schedule. When was the last time any Defense Department moved ahead of schedule? The first ship will get its lasers in 2027, and they already paid out a £316 million contract to MBDA UK to make it happen. This is what oh. a rollout looks like. So let's go through what the UK just demonstrated, why it matters for NATO, and how it compares to Ukraine's Trizub laser, and how this ties into Ukraine's battlefield innovations that I've been covering for three years. The announcement could not have come at a more symbolic time. In the hey. same week Dragonfire footage went public, London publicly accused a Russian spy ship, the Yantar, of using lasers to blind Royal Air Force pilots during surveillance flights. Russia is using lasers to interfere with aircraft. The UK is using lasers to delete aircraft. That contrast tells you everything about where NATO wants to be. And this matters because the last few years have shown a pattern. The threat to ships is no longer just cruise missiles or anti-ship weapons. It's drones. Cheap, oh. plentiful, fast drones. In the Red Sea, the Royal Navy and the U.S. Navy spent millions of dollars firing missiles to shoot down Iranian targets that cost a few thousand bucks and we're basically flying Mario Karts. That is not sustainable. Every Navy in the world realized that if drones continue evolving, your billion dollar warship can get attrited by something smaller than your ship's lifeboat. And Isn't that crazy? Think about it. All these drones, all these, they just, just snuff you out in just a click. This small, tiny thing flying up there. Can you, like he said, snuff out it you just sit in there like a sitting duck this drone come out this warship that you spend millions on just gone and once they upgrade the system and think you know where technology is going from left to right it's definitely going to get better so i don't blame the the uk from doing what they're doing not one bit there's a dragon fire my liege the uk mod released high resolution video of dragon fire tracking and vaporizing drones traveling at more than 400 miles per hour Aye. that is not that is not more than 400 miles an hour it the laser can literally track it and incinerate it that's crazy not a toy that is not a slow quadcopter that no. is a full speed target drone that simulates the kind of kamikaze uavs russia loves to mass produce I... here's what the test demonstrated first above the horizon tracking this is a big one it means dragon fire is not just a panic button you press when a drone is already in your face the system can reach out find and lock onto fast movers while there's still a decent distance from the ship above oh. the horizon tracking tells us the fire control the optics and the stabilization are good enough to follow a small fast target against a cluttered background like sea clouds or atmospheric haze in practical terms that buys the ship time time to pick targets time to prioritize threats 
time to engage multiple drones in sequence instead of waiting until everything is inside knife fight range. Second, Whoa. sub 10 second kills. Lasers need dwell time on target. You have to hold the beam in one place long enough to dump enough energy into the airframe to melt something important. The new Dragonfire footage shows kills happening in a matter of seconds, not half a minute. That tells you two things. The beam is being held steady despite ship motion, wind, and turbulence. Because that's what I was thinking. How on God's green earth is the laser being pointed at the target even in rough condition? It doesn't matter what, what's going on in the ship for it to incinerate something in a matter of seconds. That's crazy right there. And I love the fact that it don't, you don't have to be in target range for it to find you. It can find you before the threat comes so close that they can protect themselves or, or, or do what they need to do. That's crazy right there. That's crazy right there. And power level is high enough that once the laser bites, the structure fails quickly. On a kamikaze drone or fast UAV, a few seconds can be the difference between a clean intercept and a very awkward insurance claim. Third, accuracy. The MOD says Dragonfire can hit a one pound coin oh. at one kilometer. That is not a party trick. That is the entire point of a high energy laser. Shoot. A drone might be bigger than a coin, but you are not trying to warm up the whole fuselage. You're just trying to cook something critical. Flight control surfaces, sensor balls, warhead sections, fuel tanks, a laser that can Man. reliably hold on a coin sized target at that distance can pick where it wants to hurt the drone. You can blind its optics, you can shred a wing root or punch through a control surface and or oh. let aerodynamics and Sir Isaac Newton do the rest. Fourth, cost per shot, about 10 pounds, roughly $13. That is the price of a mediocre airport sandwich to delete a drone. For comparison, the US Navy's SM-2 missile runs about $2 million per round. Even a short range Sea Sparrow is in the hundreds of thousands. Those are fantastic weapons against cruise missiles and high-end threats, but it is economic death to spend that kind of money on every quadcopter and lawnmower with explosives your opponent can churn out. $13 versus hundreds of thousands. Listen to the comparison. 13, 13 pounds. Compare. One thing with the U.S. is either go big or go home. You know, listen to the price. Hundreds of thousands for one shot. But here in the, in the U.K., 13 pounds. I can get a chips. I can get a sandwich. I can get a juice for under $5. <laughs> for under five pounds. I hear you are saying this a third. So I can have two lunch deal, two meal deal in the U.K. for that. That is the fight NATO wants to win because budgets lose wars yep. long before soldiers do. Fifth, yep. no ammo constraints. A laser fires as long as the ship generates power. Oh. There are no magazines to reload, no pallets of interceptors to crane aboard and port. No, we are down to our last three missiles. Hope this works. The limiting factor becomes cooling and power management, not how many metal tubes you bought last fiscal year. Nice. That changes commander behavior. You can afford to engage earlier. You take yes. more shots to thin out a swarm instead of gambling on a single perfect missile salvo. In a world where drones are cheap and endless, having a weapon that does not care about ammo count is a very big deal. Missile-rich nations can be attrited. Power-rich nations cannot. If you think about it, lasers are the natural evolution of the drone-saturated battlefields of 2025. There really is no other way to counter massed swarms of drones than lasers or maybe microwave energy weapons. The UK is not messing around. They are fitting Dragonfire onto Type 45 destroyers. These ships already carry some of the best air defenses in NATO, including the Aster missile family. Dragonfire will sit underneath that like a cost-effective, infinitely reliable first line of defense. The first destroyer gets its laser in 2027. That is five years faster than originally planned. The Woo, I tell you, the dragon fire coming. Hey, years earlier than expected. Listen to me. I know a lot of countries sweating in them pants, sweating and smelling themselves. Like, what have we done? Look what 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 what, what has happened? What what has happened here? 
Why did we get ourselves? I think we need to be allies with the UK now because this don't look good on our end. Look here. MOD wants a layered defense that looks like this. Dragon fire for drones and small high-speed threats, missiles for cruise missiles and heavy UAVs, and then long-range interceptors for the big boys. This is about tempo. You cannot shoot $20 million worth of missiles every week at drones Russia builds in a garage. Dragon That's fire true. changes the math. If you watched my first Dragonfire video, you know I compared it to the Ukrainian Trizub battlefield laser. Trizub is the scrappy, built under shelling cousin that Ukraine threw into combat with the philosophy of tested on the Russians. Dragonfire is the PhD version with multiple lasers being combined into a single coherent shot. Trizub oh. is operational right now. Dragonfire is the long-term investment. And here's what's changed since that video in 2024. Back then, Dragonfire's power output was around 50 kilowatts. Now that's good enough for small UAVs, but not enough to burn through hardened targets. With the new tests, the UK is clearly pushing higher because a 400 mile per hour target is no joke. Nope. The optics have been stabilized, atmospheric distortion corrections upgraded, and beam combining algorithms refined. In short, Dragonfire is graduating from a lab project to combat system. As I mentioned, the UK's announcement arrived right after Russia tried to use lasers to interfere with RAF pilots. Not destroy, oh. just annoy. That difference in capability is enormous. NATO just got the first operational high-power shipborne laser in Europe. Germany is developing its own, but the UK beat everyone to the finish line. Dragonfire is... Woo! I'm glad we are nice. That's all I'm going to say. The UK beat everybody. See, everybody had do them thing in the UK. It's so, okay. We got to fix this and we got to fix it now. We got to deal with this and we got to deal with now. Because since you want to come, you want to roll over here and un annoy our RAF fl um, flyers, our pilots, we're going to teach you a lesson. We ain't going to deal with the cheap stuff. We're going to go a, a, a level higher and higher. So that when we come out with our stuff, you don't stand a chance. She's your whiz. That's crazy. 400, over 400. Nah, nah, nah. It's going to matter nah. to the Black Sea and beyond. Imagine a Royal Navy destroyer entering a threatened zone in the Red Sea or the Mediterranean. Instead of spending a million dollars per shot on drones, it spends 13 bucks. Multiply that across the deployment and suddenly NATO has cost dominance again. Yep. Russia's reliance on drone swarms becomes much less effective. A laser does not need to reload. A ship does. The limiting factor becomes power generation, not stockpiled interceptors. Uh -huh. The technological leap signals to Russia that NATO navies will not be attrited by budget pressure. Lasers no. erase the economics that cheap drones rely on. This is the real shift. Lasers will not replace missiles. They complement them. Missiles still hit long-range hardened targets. Lasers handle the spam. They handle the swarms. They can oh. keep your missile magazines full for the threats that matter. Think of it this yes. way. Missiles stop. Yes, I get it. That makes a whole lot of sense. So it's not replacing missiles. It's just taking out the, like he said, the clutter, the excess, and the extra hard target the mids missile the the bigger threat and, and and more sturdier target the missiles are there for it and remember you don't have to refill or, 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 or it just keep going as long as there's energy on that ship that laser keep going so all you need to make sure that you never go out of power you never go out of energy whatsoever Wars, lasers stop the nonsense and NATO needs both. The UK's Dragonfire program has moved from concept to contract, from trials to kills, from sometime next decade to fleet ready in 2027. Right. This is early, historic, disruptive, and it puts the Royal Navy at the forefront of directed yep. energy warfare in the Alliance. Mm -hmm. Ukraine's tries a blazer shows what innovation looks like in wartime. Britain's Dragonfire shows what innovation looks like when a major defense industrial base puts its foot down and accelerates. Together, they point toward a battlefield where the cheapest weapon does not win by numbers, but loses by physics. Mm. This is the future. And the future just burned a hole through a 400 mile per hour drone.
So yes, this is the biggest Dragonfire update since the program was announced. The UK has fired the first real shots of the directed energy era, and NATO is watching closely. That's it for today, my friends. Subscribing really is the best free way to support these videos. For longer deep dives, I do write a lot on Substack. So if you want more global security analysis, you can scan this code or just go to wesodonnell.com. I've pointed my website directly to my newsletter. But honestly, I enjoy making videos more than I enjoy writing, so subscribing here on YouTube is your best bet. Oh, and as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine. No, sir. Listen to me, man. UK, like I say, you have them sweating in them boots. Listen, so glad we are allies. That's all I can say because you guys are on the forefront. You ain't playing, you ain't easing up, and you're like, okay, you want to do what you got to do? Well, well, we got to do what we got to do. We're going to keep calm, carry on, and do what we got to do to let you start shitting in your boots. It's that simple, straightforward to the T. And I'm like, okay, this was expected a year in another four years or so. It is here now. Hey, that dragon, listen, spitball. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> That's what came to mind. I know it's serious stuff, but sometimes you gotta laugh about stuff, don't you guys? It's your other girl and I'm running out of here. Be good, be kind, be safe out there. Don't forget to hit the like and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you think America, on the other hand, even though we're allies, say, oh, we shouldn't have let them gotten to this point before us are feeling some kind of way? What do you think? Let me know. All right, it's your girl, and I'm out. Love you guys. Bye.